Here at Maple Grove Picnic Area, we're going to tap 80 sugar maple trees. That means we're going to insert a spile deep into the sapwood and collect some of the sap on warmer days and start to cook that and process that into maple syrup. Every 20 minutes we have hikes departing and these are short hikes, maybe 20-30 minutes through the woods and then you'll spend some time at the sugar house and you're going to see some of the history we're going to explain to you as the American Indians have uh, discovered that you can turn sap into something sweeter through the, the pioneers and then into modern times, the differences in the methods of collection and cooking. You need to cook 40 gallons of sap to end up with one gallon of maple syrup. You see, most of the sap that comes out of a sugar maple, 98%, is water. So a small portion of it, just 2%, is sugar. One of the little known secrets about uh, maple syrup uh, is that when sap is dripping from the tree, you see that 2% sweetness is actually sucrose. And the longer that the sap sits inside of the tubes or the basin before it starts to, to cook, there's more bacteria and microbes that can begin to unpack that sucrose into its con constituent parts, glucose and fructose. So those monosaccharides are actually going to be the browning agents. This is why you get the color and, in fact, the, the taste of maple syrup. So there's a sweet spot in how long the sap should sit because you'll go from that golden, more, more delicate flavoring into those darker ambers and more rich and robust flavorings. And, in fact, the golden is, is, and more delicate flavoring is the pricier of maple syrup. Right here in the Midwest and in the east northeastern part of the United States, we are in the sweet spot of where sugar maples grow. So this region is where we have a higher density of sugar maples, and it's that specific tree which has the sweetest sap, up into Vermont and into Canada. That's why Ohio and into Canada has the highest commercial production of maple syrup.